We're starting on page 29. Yes. My 29 looks like your 29. I do not know. Slash a 31 for Eleanor. Okay. You guys, I'm going to kind of modify these notes a bit today. So when we talk about something being continuous, if I were to write Lulu continuously, I wouldn't be able to pick up my pen. Ooh, that's really hard to write. <laughs> if I were to write Ricky continuously, I can't pick up my pen. Okay? If I were to write Chris, I feel like, oh, no, I don't want an, I don't want an I. Obi, Ryan, that's a good one. Ryan will work. Ryan, I don't have to pick it up. Okay? All those names are continuous if you don't pick up your pen. There are three, so let's graph like any continuous function. Woo, that's continuous, right? Did I pick up my pen? What about a good old X cubed? Great, good old X. All those are continuous, you guys, and maybe you just want to say, don't pick up or you can't pick up your pencil. I'm not going to say don't. You cannot pick up pencil in order for it to be continuous. Page 33, buddy. Nope, page 29, buddy. You guys, there are th three types of discontinuities. A function is discontinuous. Why do you think they call this one infinite? Yeah, wouldn't you agree as my x approaches zero, what's my y doing? It's going to infinity. So anytime we've got this vertical asymptote, that's going to be infinite discontinuity. What do you think makes this guy jump? I literally would have to lift my pen and put it back down to then continue on, right? I would have to jump with my pen. So we've got jump discontinuity. And finally, just a little point. What would you might call that on a graph? That's just a hole. So you guys, anytime we have a hole, this is just point discontinuity. And they call it point because if I filled in that hole, my graph would then be continuous. If I filled in that point, then it would be continuous. But if that one little point's not filled in, nope, discontinuous. You down with that? You guys, I wrote the silliest um, definitions ever. If a function is not discontinuous, it's considered to be, who says that? Who says that? But you're right, continuous, sorry about that. Such a lame definition. And I'm good with that on the front page, I'm good. We can just skip from that. All right, y'all, so we're on page 30. And now it says, describe the end behaviors. And you guys, we're gonna see some like calculus um, symbols here. Have you ever seen this right here? We're talking an arrow? I have seen an arrow. <laughs> In math? I mean, when I draw it. Yeah, when we draw it. Okay, cute, cute, cute. You guys, what this is saying is this is literally saying as X approaches infinity. And, you, and the reason why we have to approach infinity with an arrow like we're getting close to it is because you cannot be infinity, right? You, that's not an actual value. So x cannot equal infinity. But as my x's go on infinitely in that x direction, what we're going to say is my y's are approaching some value. So you get to draw your arrows now too. My y's are approaching. Now let's think about this. When my x was 1, my y is like a half. My x is 2, my y is 0. When x is 3, my y might be 5. When x is 4, my y is going to be like 100. When x is 5, my y is going to be 2,000. Where are those y's approaching? They're going to infinity, right? So we get to say my y's are approaching infinity. What about as my x's go to negative infinity? This is when x is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Negative four, negative five. What are my y's doing? Negative. They're approaching negative infinity. So I'm going to say my y is approaching negative infinity. So this graph, once I typed it in my calculator, is just like that. You guys, if it's asking as x approaches infinity, as x gets bigger to the right, what are my y values doing? Yeah, they're going down to negative infinity. So we're going to say my y approaches negative infinity. What about as my x goes to the negative infinities? Where's my y going? Yeah, I agree. My y is going up, up, up to infinity. So with that being said, 
I would like you to flip your page to, flip the page to page 33. And I want you to do 20, 21, and 22. We just were on page, what page were we on, Everest? We were on 33. Could you please go back to 31? I'm sorry I'm having you bounce around. Oh, gosh, you guys are fine. Wow. So we're back on this one. Okay, y'all. What's this parent function going to look like? A parabola. Which way am I going? Right five, up three, flip it over the x-axis. So you guys, I'm going to go right five, up three. And I'm going to flip it over the x-axis. So I'm going to reflect it over the x-axis. One squared, two squared is four, three squared is nine. Okay, so we have our basic function drawn. Now what we've got to talk about today is what the heck is going on with that graph, meaning when is it increasing and decreasing? So correct me if I'm wrong, y'all. When I highlight this in blue, this y value right now in blue is negative 6. This y value is negative 1. This y value is 2. This y value is 3. Would you agree in blue, my function is increasing because those y values got bigger? You guys okay with that? When my function is increasing in blue, what's it doing in green? It's decreasing because those y values are getting smaller, okay? So this is what messes my kids up. When they ask, when it says, when is it increasing and decreasing, they're asking about the y values there. When are my, my y values increasing? When are my y values decreasing? And they want to know for what x values is that happening. So you guys, if we're talking about this blue region, do you agree my x right here is 2? My x here is 3. My x here is 4 and my x here is 5. For those x values, my function's increasing all the way up till 5. So these answers over here, we have to put them as an x interval, which really messes people up. Meaning, do you agree this graph is increasing this whole time here to the left? So when my x's are negative infinity until what x value? Five. It's increasing from negative infinity to five. Those are x values. When my x's are negative all the way to x value of five, Lulu, Logan, my x's, my y values are increasing from negative eight to five on the x-axis. When is my function decreasing for what x values? Five. Now be careful. My y values are going to negative infinity. That's what makes my function decrease. For what x values does that happen? Yes. Nico just said, well, from five and then six and seven and eight, and then my X's are going to keep getting bigger. So we're going to say from five to infinity, my graph is going to um, decrease. And again, that's an X interval. These are talking about the Y's. A function is decreasing when the Y values get smaller. You guys, a critical point is like a max or a min. What would we call right here? Yeah, that's a max at what point? 5, 3. And what's really confusing, that's a coordinate, x comma y. This one is an x comma y. All of these are really x comma x's, right? It's an x interval. So that's confusing. Okay. Let's try that again, shall we? This is funky. Ready, Viv? Let's go graph this guy. General shape is going to be an absolute value, which is the V. Which way are we taking that V? Left three, down five, wider or skinnier? Good. Left three, down five, wider. My slope is up one over two. Oh, 
Okay, when I draw that graph, and we always read graphs from left to right, you guys. If I read this from the left, is it increasing or decreasing in blue? Decreasing, my Y's are getting smaller. Then my Y's are increasing, right? Okay, we gotta say when are those happening on the X coordinates. My function is decreasing from what X to what X? Ah, that's the y value. Negative 5 is a y value. Yes. So, you guys, again, this it's increasing and decreasing. These are both referring to the y's. The y values are increasing and decreasing for what x's. So, if we're saying, ooh, it is decreasing. I'm going to do blue first. It's decreasing. Viv, you said when x was negative infinity until x value of negative 3. You okay with that? Okay, okay, I think this is hard. In green, my y values are increasing. They were negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one. They're increasing for what x is? Yes, negative three to infinity. Critical point? Consider that. Negative three, negative five would be a min. Very good. Let's make two negative four-ish. Again, I'm kind of rounding on this to make our lives a little easier. And then this little max up here was, um, let's say negative one, eight. Negative one, eight. So I'm gonna put those up there. And honestly, if I were you, I would also write those coordinates. Two negative four, negative one, eight. Can you read that okay? Two negative four, negative one, eight. Cammie, you clear you're good with that? You guys, we're going to just ish draw the shape. You're going to be like, I don't know, I was doing a little bit of this, and then a little bit of this, and then a little bit of this. Actually, I'll do it thicker. It was increasing. Great. Ish. Doesn't have to be perfect. A look good, Ricky? Good. Question. What's my graph doing in blue? Increasing. What's my graph doing in green? Increasing. Great. What's my graph doing in blue? Increasing again. So we're going to have two times that is increasing. That's cool. That's cool. Don't forget, we're talking about for what X's did these Y's get bigger? These Y's were negative infinity and then it's zero and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It goes up to eight. For what X's did those Y's go up to eight? Negative infinity, infinity to x value of negative 1. You guys down with that? That's awesome. I've got the fattest pen color ever that I got to bring down a little bit. Yes, and, very good, from what x to what x for it to be increasing again? My y's are getting bigger. My y's go from negative 4 up to infinity for what x is. Two to infinity. You guys, this is fabulous. Two to infinity. Fabulous. Ricky, I think you deserve that fabulous. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you guys, for what X's are my Y's decreasing? My Y was as high as 8 and as low as negative 4. For what X's? Negative 1 to 2. Negative one to two. Does that make sense? We got to talk about only the X's. These are all X's. Well, nope, let me do that. These are just x's. And you agree that I was from negative 1 to 2? What are my maxes and mins here? Max at? Perfect, thank you. Min at? 2, negative 4. Beautiful. And again, those are kind of rounded. They're not exact from our calculator. I didn't want to have to deal with those negatives or uh, decimals. So you guys, at this point, turn back to 33. Turn back to 33. And let's finish those last two probs. Let's finish those last two problems on the bottom.
Yes, use your calculator, go plug that in, and let's see if we can get those general shapes to help us figure out our end behavior. When we're looking at these, yes, I agree, my Ys are not increasing right here, Neek, but because, look at what they're asking here, when X approaches infinity. So they don't care what's going on when X is zero, one, two, they only care as X is all the way to the right. And on this graph, if X is all the way to the right, my Y is going all the way up to infinity. So that's why it's called end behavior, Neek, because they don't care about what's going on in the middle, just on the ends. Y'all, what's a negative infinity over here? Yep, these Ys are going to negative infinity. Um, you guys, I'm going to show you. I can do this without, you can do this without a calculator. Check this out. End behaviors are all dictated by that biggest exponent. So this end behavior is going to look like an X cubed-ish graph. Did it have a little bit more going on, like some, some of that? Yeah. But in general, it had the x cubed shape. The end behavior is going to be dictated by that. What's an x to the fourth going to look like? Here's x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth. They all have that same end behavior. What's the negative going to do? Voom. So this guy, I don't know where it is, but again, I don't care because it's asking end behavior. Was it something kind of like that? Yeah. Okay. As x goes to infinity, where's that y going? Negative infinity. What about as x approaches negative infinity? Same. Same thing. Y is going to negative infinity. Mr. Richards. Okay. Ooh. Do we zoom out? Or? One over x squared. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is your graph looking something like this? Yeah. What do you think, Kowalczyk? Is your graph looking something like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. So we've not had one like this, you guys. Okay, Logan, you're saying if my X is going to infinity, if my X is going all the way to the right, Logie, would you agree those Y values look like they're approaching zero? Yeah. We've got a horizontal asymptote. They're never going to be zero. And that's what you're writing when you say this. My Y values are approaching zero. So good, Logs. Okay, here we go. What about if X is going to negative infinity? Where's my Y going? Say that, Lou. Still going, still going to zero. My Y is still going to zero. What do we think this one's going to be? Negative 1 over X cubed plus 2. Go graph that one real fast. Negative 1 over X cubed plus 2. My graph, it was like this. Was it like this, y'all? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's the opposite. Oh, it is? Thanks, Viv. So you're saying it was like this? You have a chance to Thank you, Ricky. And they're all up two. So as X approaches infinity, that Y is leveling off at two. It's approaching two. It's never going to be it. And the same as X approaches negative infinity, my Y is still leveling off at two. Meaning just something like this. Okay. When is it ever increasing? Never. never. It's going down the whole time. So you're going to say never, not, uh, uh, uh. It's never increasing. Never, not, uh, uh, uh. Uh, nah, uh, 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 <laughs> exactly. Okay. When is it decreasing, y'all? Always. always. How would I say always on the x-axis? <laughs> you guys are so good, I can't even handle it. Negative infinity to infinity. This is my missus jump voice. <laughs> I love Mrs. Jump and I love her accent even more. You guys, last one. I see Ricky's over there typing it in. Go, Chris. Go, Chris. Go type in this last one. If you're like, how do I type in absolute value again? It's math, right arrow, enter. Can't we just graph it? Ooh, but this one, correct me if I'm wrong. I've got a parent function of x squared and absolute value, so it's going to wiggle around for us a little bit. What'd you ask, Neek? The whole time, right? From negative infinity to infinity. Ricky, is it funky looking? I don't know. It's pretty satisfying. It's like someone doing this. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a big deal. So those zeros are at negative 2 and 2, and it goes as high as 4. So it would be like this. Eh, forget about it. Boop. Eh? Okay, you guys. What the heck is happening in the beginning? Is it increasing or decreasing? And then, and then, and then, 
And then, you guys ever see now? What the heck, you guys? Would you agree? You said in red, my graph is decreasing. Freeman, my y values go down, 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 down. For what x's did my y's go down, 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 down? Negative. All the way to negative 2, but where are we going to start at? Yeah. So they're decreasing from negative infinity to negative 2. And then you guys said it was increasing. For what x values do my y's go from 0, 1, 2, 3? Negative 2 to 0. Awesome, Eleanor. Negative 2 to 0. Red said my function is decreasing. For what x values do my red numbers go from 4, 3, 2, 1, 0? 0 to 2. Back to decreasing. And lastly, when is my function increasing? 2 to infinity. So good. You guys, no one's done that well. That's so awesome, you guys. Uh, last one, wait, 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 what about the top question? Uh, <laughs> it's literally jump explanation Tory. What did you say that word was? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Equivalent. Equivalentary. Equivalentary. Yeah, we would have to jump to continue drawing that. Awesome sauce. We got your homework done. This is an AP Calc test question. Sorry, I went like way page crazy. You don't even have to write it down. I don't care. It's on page maybe 34 or something. 31. 31? Thanks, Everest. 31? It's just a scribble. 31.5. Thanks, Neek. You guys, where does X have a jump discontinuity? I'm curious. What would you say? Seven? He said seven. Would y'all agree at seven? For me to draw this graph, I'd be drawing it, and then I'd have to jump to continue drawing it. You are good. What is going on at two or three? What kind of discontinuity at three? Good, which is point discontinuity. Good. What's going on at 10? Another? No, I know. This one's a little, this is actually another point discontinuity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't let this guy confuse you up there. That's just saying the function has a value at that point. But no, do you agree this is just a hole in the graph though? So that is point discontinuity as well. So the only jump is at 7.